for me, um, what set Hammer films apart was that we left that world that we were in and walked back into a world of the imagination that was so beautifully crafted and so utterly believable. Those darkened theatres, you just left 20th century and walked back into preceding century. It was so convincing, the sets and the costumes. It's a beautiful time. I was very fortunate to get the role of Maria in Dracula Has Risen from the Grave. And it was uh, caused by a, one photograph that a photographer took on the south coast of Britain, and a man by the name of Ben Jones, uh, who uh, was a very successful photographer. It was his idea that we went there. And he took a series of shots of me walking out of the water and, you know, a dockside and on a boat and everything. But the one that was used was in the Daily Mirror tabloid paper. It was on the front page of the uh, Sunday edition. And Jimmy Careerus saw this picture and said, I want that girl in my next movie. And that was my lucky break. I never thought that would happen. Although when I sat in the theater, I used to think, I'm going to be up there. I'm going to be with these people. I just didn't know how it would happen. There was a sort of a sense of destiny about Hammer for me, there was. I was totally in awe of the family of Hammer, as we knew it to be. It was a family because you saw the same people in different roles. So you had a lovely moment of expectancy and anticipation. You knew you were going to be safely horrified. And, uh, and you knew you were going to enjoy it. So when I had landed this role and I was going to finally work with Christopher Lee, it t well, it took my breath away in one moment, but it filled me with an, or, or another kind of breath at the same time. So I landed on my feet. I was very lucky, af afraid, but very excited. I found the magnetism uh, in Chris's Dracula to be quite overwhelming, very powerful presence he had. So I was very eager and somewhat skeptical to meet the man. I didn't want the persona not to be there. I didn't want it all to be on the screen and just not have, but he's there. It, he's everything you expect him to be and more besides. And uh, the thing that impressed me most because of this grand presence he has on the screen, was the fact that he was, didn't have a grand presence off screen, but he had a, a very noble presence. And co he commanded enormous respect wherever he went, and not a little awe, but he was completely kind and gentle and willing to talk and willing to share his experiences and willing to have a joke with you. And it, uh, that, that was the delight, that was the surprise. I remember having the gall to, and I didn't think of it at the time as Gore, because he was so approachable, because he was so helpful to me as a newcomer. I actually asked him if he would sit still for about half an hour while I did a sketch. There was no side about the fact that I, there was no side for the publicity. We sat very quietly in a room and he sat absolutely immobile. For about 35 minutes, I did a, a buyer of sketch of him. So um, I couldn't make a mistake, it was one or nothing. And uh, I presented the sketch to him as a thank you gift. But then I have the photograph of me sketching him, and I have the photograph of the sketch there for me to keep. I don't think I'd have the nerve to do it today. I was so proud. <laughs> they treated me so well. I really joined the Hammer family. My first day there, uh, uh, the, the first day of being on the set, my, my dressing room was full of flowers. I took my sister onto the set. They made my family welcome. They said, yes, they, I could take my parents on the set. I was so excited. I wanted them to share this wonderful feeling that was on that set, you know. And uh, it was just such a happy time. I never expected one to lead to the other like it did. Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed has to be my favorite of the three films because I had more experience. I'd learned a lot uh, thanks to Freddie Francis and thanks to Christopher and thanks to everybody that worked with me. Terry Fisher left me more to my own devices. Um, Freddie Francis was, he coaxed me, he encouraged me, which I needed, not knowing anything. <laughs> I'd learned a lot from them by then. Um, so I was able to walk a little bit more on my own. 
And of course, the script was excellent. The supporting cast was fantastic. I had Peter Cushing to work with. I was co-starring with Peter Cushing. I just couldn't believe my good fortune. Peter was one of the dearest people I've ever met. And everyone used to say this, and I thought, oh, he can't be that dear. But he's, he's every bit that dear. And I became very fond of him. We had a very good working relationship. He was also very supportive and very... He'd give me little suggestions and congratulate me if he felt I did something right. He was um, an exquisite man. The first day on Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed was very memorable because it was my death scene. Now, remember, I haven't done anything. <laughs> All the other scenes, none of them. This is my death scene. And... Uh, we were sitting on the cellar stairs, Peter, myself, and Terry. And these two started to talk. So, um, how exactly do you think we're going to kill this girl then, Peter? As if I'm not there. And Peter said, so seriously, I'll never forget it. He said, do you know what I think is a good idea? She's got the scalpel in her hand, right? She's just stabbed this man. That's right, says Terry. He said, well, I thought, how about I embrace her, and as I do, turn her hand so that I pull her onto the scalpel rather than put the scalpel into her. Pull her onto the scalpel, and it enters her heart. Wonderful. Wonderful. We'll do it. We'll do it. And so Terry goes off all joyous. I'm left sitting there thinking, well, this is a lovely way to die. I really do believe Peter had been giving it a lot of thought. I thought, I wonder about this dear man. I wonder how dear he really is. <laughs> dear Elizabeth, how you've grown. People do in six years. I think Jimmy Sangster brought a whole uh, different aspect to what I perceived Hammer was. And Horror of Frankenstein was my feeling that it was too lightly handled by him. Don't get me wrong, and this is where I've been misquoted, which is, uh, my words have been taken out of context. Jimmy is a, is a wonderful director. He's totally professional. And he would take Ralph Bates, the new Frankenstein, and I to lunch and said, now let's get all the laughter out of the way, guys. When we go on that set, we are deadly serious. You have to treat it greatly, which we, which we did. But he put an underlying str strain of humor under it which I hadn't encountered or even thought Hammer should have. And he knows that. I was a little bit disapproving, maybe, maybe because I was a traditionalist. When the monster, when it came to life and it raised the finger, you know, I thought that was really naughty. I was very disapproving, God, I, was, I must have been insufferable at times. And of course, the English one was two fingers and the American one was one finger. I could have smacked Jimmy. As I thought, this is really schoolboy humor, that was. But uh, how, how can you not love this guy? And the moments that I remember most in that are the mischievous moments that, that Jimmy had. He, Jimmy has got the most wonderful sense of humor. It would be little things that, about Jimmy that would keep everyone on the set up upbeat, really upbeat. And uh, I can remember they were lighting a scene and I said, well, I might as well, I was in bed. I said, I might as well stay under the covers. It was blissfully comfortable and it wouldn't, it was only going to take them about 10 minutes to light the scene. So he hopped in bed beside me, you know, and he's this mischievous bearded face uh, alongside, which caused a lot of hilarity on the set. I thought you were marvelous, Victor. So did I. I was rather good, wasn't I? Ralph was superb as well, wasn't he? He had a wonderful career before he came to Hammer. He had a wonderful stage career. He had a lovely presence. He was a fine actor and uh, also had a lot of sense. They, those two together were terrible. You know, Ralph and Jimmy together were unbelievable. You know, they, <laughs> I'd leave them to their own devices at lunch. I would really, they were very mischievous together. Totally professional on the set. Oh, I wished I could have worked with him more. I didn't have many scenes with Ralph, did I, in that movie? It was mostly Kate O'Mara, and I remember being quite envious of Kate's role in that movie. Really, she had a wonderful role in it. She was wonderful in it. Really meaty role she played in that. You've put on weight in a couple of places. Not too much, I hope, sir. Not at all. I remember best about Ralph, the future that we all saw for him, being the young, the new Dr. Frankenstein, and how horribly it was snatched away from him by pancreatic cancer. It was explained to me, as I took my breath in, that Warner Brothers had the, um, the copyright on how the monster was, and we had to Hammer had to create its own version. And so I figured, well, he'd have to be of a muscular build 
to be the person he was supposed to be. I found his garments a little odd, but they obviously wanted everyone to see his muscular build. It was a magnificent build. Yes, I think his, his garment was a bit off, wasn't it? I come to think, I've never really dwelt on that before. What on earth do you think you're doing? I didn't care that Hammerfilz didn't seem to be getting, getting respect from the critics. I, I cared about what my friends thought. To me, and, and to so many of us, that we thought they were wonderful. That they're different to the, the action movies of today or the horror movies of today, which I find so scary, so repulsive, and so visceral. And I, I, I like to imagine, I think the imagination can scare you more than reality sometimes. When Hammer films have been brought back to life as they have been by younger generations, as well as my generation still respecting them, but the younger generation that have come forward, people that started to see them when they were eight years old, illegally, I gather, <laughs> and 11 years old, one young man wrote to me and said his first film was Dracula, has risen from the grave. And he said, my first horror film. And he said, and I want to thank you, Miss Carlson, for bringing all the horror into my young life. <laughs> I thought that was beautifully worded. I kept the letter, but I knew what he meant. And uh, to have succeeding generations um, give them the applause and the respect that they do deserve, it's, uh, it's en enormously gratifying. I'm very proud of that. When I went to live on Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, and I used only my married name, I never told anybody about these movies. I thought I'd walked away from it. I, had, I was raising my family, I was painting, my, my artwork was very important to me. And uh, all of a sudden, people on the island would recognize, because they, all of a sudden, they were cropping up on TNT, HBO, Cinemax, and people were saying, I saw you on TV last night. So word got out, and all of a sudden I was a celebrity on Hilton Head. But I was treated so well. Let's drink to the success of your work, Victor. It's easy to sketch people who you have a lot of respect and high regard for. Michael has a mischievous face, a mischievous look on his face all the time. He can't help it. He's just like that. I loved watching him. And he would be like all the Hammer family. Oh, I like the way you did that, darling. I really believed you were scared. I loved that scene. He'd come up to you and always that mischief in his face. And uh, he was just good to be around. You know, these people have an aura, don't they? You, make, you, feel, you walk into that aura and you feel good. And I loved Peter. I loved them all, you see. And it was something that I wanted to keep alive. It was my way of bringing Hammer back in a more, maybe a more modern setting. All the people that had made Hammer that were special and I, it was my part of being a part of them and because there's so many I didn't work with so at least there's a part of me everywhere uh, which I like to think certainly when I'm gone that part of me will be around won't it oh gosh I hope so mm.